We're going to place the card inside the deck, and I want you to tell me what it was. And the reason why is I'm going to attempt to will your card out from the other cards with telekinetic power. So, what was your card? One card right out from the middle. Now, that was exciting even for me. <laughs> sure, I'd like you to hand it back to her and see if we actually have a winner. We do. Um, uh, so I'm guessing you have not played any cards yourself. No. Uh, no. Uh, I can take so we've got these uh, take out a different card this time. Go ahead, you okay. help yourself. I don't want to see the first thing. The first thing we did was an act of telekinesis. Yeah. With this, I like to try to try telepathy. So I'd like you to think of that card for me. Do you have it in mind? Yes. You do. <laughs> The five of clubs. Yes, it's the first one that has come to me. I felt we had a very special connection when you came tonight, and even more so now. Ride this way. Ride this way. Sir, I appreciate you volunteering so quickly. Young lady. Right over here, you're right over here. So you've been dating this nice guy for a couple months. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. Give me your first name, sir. Leroy. Leroy and Diana. Diana, Diana. Leroy, nice to have you here. Uh, guys, uh, you might be wondering why I have you up here, but uh, Leroy, you're best find out. <laughs> Folks, I figure since they just started dating, it would be nice and save you a lot of time, dear. <laughs> a psychic compatibility test. A psychic <laughs> test. Now, Leroy, uh, good luck. Because <laughs> what he's going to be trying to do, Diana, is actually picking and finding the one half of card that you choose. Now, Leroy, this could go sideways. And if it does, don't worry, man. I got you covered. Right. There's a little envelope on that table, folks, the one that says prediction on it. That's just a backup plan if things go wrong. I, I have a feeling they probably won't, so you're in good shape. I like you, buddy. I like and you're bigger than me. All right. <laughs> Pointing and touching. Just touch any half you'd like. Leave your finger on it. This one right here. Hold it to yourself, dear. Don't show me. You can look at it. I'm excited for you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of options. Uh, let go with your intuition, man. I mean, point to the one you think it might actually be. Intuition. Don't make it happen for him, right? <laughs> well, we'll find out. <laughs> pointing, pointing, pointing. Oh, leave your finger. This one right that was okay. Hold it yourself. Good one. Really? <laughs> hey, yeah. This is going to work or not? <laughs> I've never tried this trick before. <laughs> 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 you seem pretty cool. <laughs> Let's see how it worked out. The only, no, I don't see it yet. I'm, I'm, I keep myself in suspense to the bitter end. Leroy picked half of a card. Let's see how it worked out. On this side is Diane or Diana. 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 Diana picked half of the jackpot. <laughs> Leroy on the other side, of course, folks picked half of a five of spades. <laughs> you didn't even get the right color. <laughs> How embarrassing for you, Leroy. You have chosen the wrong half of the color. Good news, folks. Good news, we had a backup plan. Diana, hand me that envelope. Leroy, hold on to your half a card. Young lady, hold on to your half a card as well. Now, I've got good news for you. Both. Folks, they both had a free choice. And believe it or not, when I woke up this morning, I made a bit of a guess about this experiment. You're not going to believe it. It actually worked. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well done. Leroy, I, I can see you have a nervous smile. Like, don't leave me hanging, Patricia. Don't leave me hanging. You know, magic uh, absolutely took off uh, during the 1920s because of one particular guy, and that, of course, was Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was the absolute master of entertainment. He would draw crowds, thousands of people together collectively. Those thousands of people would gather and watch him in disbelief as he put his life on the line night after night. 
he would be locked up with chains and submersion tanks of water for up to five minutes at a time. Now, I just want to be very clear, uh, I will not be doing that tonight. <laughs> but I am going to be doing an escape for you tonight. By the way, I just want to mention with uh, photography and things, totally fine, but I will need you to close that because the folks behind you, that would be very distracting. So I do need to get two people to come up here and lock me up. Now it won't be kids, sorry guys. <laughs> that would be a little challenging. But sir, you seem like someone I can trust. Now let's get the guy right behind you, please. Right there. Give him a nice crack. Thank you for helping out, guys. Right there. That's the high point. When I say lower, go to the relaxed arms. Lower the curtain. And do it moderately quickly. <laughs> so from here to there. You got it? And the last command is to drop it. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Now, let me get you a couple of other items you'll need. One is a very important, that is the key, and the other are these. Now, this, these are the shackles we're using. I always like to mention, uh, this is legitimately one of the escapes that Harry Houdini did for 10 years. It's called the shackle escape. Please examine those for us. Make sure everything is in order, so to speak. <laughs> they seem familiar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, yeah, just like the set of no. <laughs> Take off either one of the locks and physically remove it from the chain, please. Once it's off the chain, since you are a bit of an engineer, as you already mentioned, uh, feel free to inspect the lock if you'd like to. Make sure it's legitimate. Yeah, absolutely. Good to me. We will need the key back for our friend over here. Leave it unlocked. There you are, sir, please. And uh, take yours off as well. The chains are going to be wrapped around my wrists, and you're going to secure those together with the padlocks. Okay. Now, it, securely. You're not trying to hurt me. <laughs> Just keep that in mind, it is metal on skin. Uh, leave the key on the table, please. Chains going around the wrist, and I would say count two links up from the bottom. One, two, one, two. Both sides. Loop it right through. Very good. That's uh, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Ah. Excellent. Yeah. When you uh, hear the bone cracks, or you uh, you know it's secure. All right. Dive on in, everybody. No, 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 not literally. You want to just around the back. Lock me up. It's a little more aggressive than we're actually. <laughs> a little more aggressive. So, all those computer frustrations coming out. <laughs> Wow. Guys, I think one thing's for certain, you did a good job and I am really secure. Are you in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Grab your handles, guys. Uh, bring it up to my waist level as kind of a starting point, uh, about waist high. Wish me luck, please. Thank you. All right, guys. Raise the curtain, please. Up high. Up, up, up. Oh, quickly lower it. Down, 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 down. Quick, quick. Down, down. Oh. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> Raise the curtain, please. You guys are doing a wonderful job, I might add. And uh, yes, lower it again. I'm making progress. <laughs> Walk away there. I still locked it up both sides, guys. Absolutely secure. Absolutely secure. Raise the curtain, please. Now, gentlemen, remember that third command? Drop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> quickly, guys, quickly, hurry. Oh, oh. I can just get out of the right side. Oh, oh that hurts. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I, hit a, I hit a bump in the road, guys. Lower the curtain, please. Sorry. <laughs> And gentlemen, if you'd be so kind to drop it to the ground, please. Well, that is a that is a workout, guys. That is a workout. I quit my gym membership months ago. <laughs> Gotta love the song choice. Kind of inspired the dance within, doesn't it? Well. This was a, a routine that Harry Houdini did for a long time in his career. Now, obviously, he probably didn't do it quite like that. It probably a little more serious, all the things back then. And actually, I don't think he did it quite that quickly. To be honest, uh, a lot of the things that he did were based on suspense. 
so they'd raise the curtain and they'd hold it there for like five minutes, you know, and the, the clock would be ticking and the guys were waiting, you know, hoping to dive in to help them if they couldn't get out. Well, one of the uh, other fellows during this era that really stood out to me was a gentleman by the name of Roy Benson, and he created a whole new kind of magic. And that magic was the magic of manipulation, the ability to manipulate objects in a way that absolutely could not be reconstructed by anyone. Because obviously, back then, magic was designed as theater, and it was actually a very sophisticated audience that would have gone to shows. Children's magic didn't even evolve until about the 1960s. So when you went to shows back in the 20s, it was exclusively at nightclubs uh, or at theater, where it would be an adult, typically sophisticated audience. I like to hand out these items first, just so they can be looked at carefully. Sir, please take a look at the ring. Make sure there's nothing unusual about it. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. Take a look at that piece of rope for me, bud. Make sure it's okay. Right in the front row, take a look at that for me. Young lady, take a look. Make sure that's okay, Stell. Make sure it's okay. Don't trust me. And, uh, sir, how's the ring? Solid. Solid and ordinary. Thank you, sir, for checking that out thoroughly. Uh, is it okay? Hand it right here for me. Very good, young man. Good? Yes. Right here for me. I did see you looking at it very carefully. <laughs> Checking it out as a good young tween should. Young man, toss. Whoa, that was, I thought you were going to come with it. <laughs> now, we're not allowed to tell you how the magic works, folks. You all know that. You all know that. But tonight, I thought we'd give you a little insight into how this one works. Why not? Life's too short not to share some information. Right, sir? Yes. That's what I'm <laughs> this is your chance, man. This is your chance. I'm one of the cards right now. <laughs> Oh, well, you did it, not me. <laughs> uh, this is pretty simple to do, actually, in theory. Watch the sequence in which I manipulate the ropes. You take them like this. You go from short to long, and all you do is change the way that they're being held. Now, it's pretty simple to do this. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, this is not the part that took years to learn. The part that took years to learn was where you take the ropes and actually really make them become the same. Each and every hmm. Peace. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I uh, did want to do something with the ring, of course, sir. Thank you for looking at that. And this piece will be perfect for the rest of the routine. <laughs> now, it's relatively simple to keep it on here. Just tie a little overhanded knot. Once it's on, there's a couple ways of getting it off. Cutting it is the fastest way. Magically speaking, it would actually probably look something more like this. It would just melt right through it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that again. In the air. Oh, that was close. That was close, trust me. And of course, we could have simply untied it the entire time and it would have come right off the end. Occasionally, I get surprised myself when doing this trick when the ends come off. <laughs> That's actually a problem. You can't really get it off now unless you put the ends back on. Which I will do slowly. Back over the middle. And if you loop them right over the top, you can see them kind of dangling there. You can see them as they literally melt back together. And folks, that is my little ring thing. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd like to uh, go back to where we started by uh, cutting those in half. We're almost there. These are actually all the same right now. And what's kind of interesting is they actually really are the same right now, each piece. Uh, but very quickly, they go from that moment in time back to where we started with the short piece, <laughs> the medium one, and that long. <laughs> Well, I think this is a, a nice starting point for our evening tonight together, the magic of the 20s. But we're now we're going to move on to something completely different, actually something that's very mainstream today, very modern. Uh, it's kind of magic that has taken the world by storm for a reason, because it is truly perplexing. Now, sir, I think you know what I'm talking about. The mind magic, sir. The guys, the guys who can read your thoughts, right? Now, is that a trick? I mean, how do they do that? Come on. You see it on TV. And that's the only problem, though. You see it on TV. So you're always wondering that maybe everyone's in on it. You know, uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a set audience. You know, they've been paid money to participate in a way to, you know, give the information when necessary. Regardless, tonight, real time, I'm going to be doing some psychic experiments for you. Now, it's my hope that you will leave this room tonight with the question mark in your minds. 
does Peter Morrison possess the gift? <laughs> <laughs> To be seen. We're going to start off with something relatively simple. Guessing a number one through six. And also, I'm going to turn the lights up in the room for this part of the show. I need to actually be able to see you a little better. I want to see your smiling faces back there. There it goes. Smiling faces. Come to me. Ah, oh. oh, there it is. Hey, good to see you again. Good job with the guard, man. Had you covered. Yeah, I did cover it. Uh, young lady, I I'd like your help with this. Come up here for a second. Give her a nice big giant round of applause. From Houston, Texas. Oh. Now, uh, it, it's Matson. Mason. 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 <laughs> Any number you'd like. And what you do is, when you choose the number, uh, put it in the box facing directly away from you, okay? Be kind of secretive about it. Make sure I don't see it. Make sure I don't see it. <laughs> and after you show everybody, cover it up with a lid. But not yet. Not yet. Uh, Mason, I'm going to get uh, blindfolded first. It's only fair. No. <laughs> it's right over here, Mason. Actually, the blindfold is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, quite literally. You know, I knew I would get that look on your face, that look of Peter. Where can I get a blindfold like that? <laughs> it is kind of one of a kind, actually. Uh, Lady Gaga gave this to me. <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> Let me get it on first. You make sure I can't see through it. How are we doing? <laughs> I know, a little creepy, right? I'll be over here. I'll be over here. Now, choose a number, put it face up in the box, show everybody, and when you're done showing, remember to cover it up, please. Are we good? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> keep an eye on me and keep an eye on the box, guys. I'd like you to all think of that number for me. Starting to feel the power! <laughs> Is it number five, Mason? Four? Yes. Yes, four! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Come on, folks, I can't see you. Can't see you. Can't see you. <laughs> I'm just going to mention something. We have a lot of bright people here tonight. I know some of them might be thinking, Peter, clever, clever use of this engineer design blindfold that you have. Uh, it works like a giant review mirror. So you were facing away intentionally, and that's why it's slightly blurred, why you weren't sure if it was five or four, and you can see the reflection of it in the blindfold. That's not how it works. Uh, I put it out there, a lot of people have said that. Anyway, listen, Mason, sorry, get on my eye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have you do it again. I'm ditching the blindfold. You're doing a great job. I'd like you to pick a new number. But this time, I'm going to be in front of you, I like this idea. I'll be in front of you, staring deeply, slightly uncomfortably, <laughs> into this young man's eyes. Now make sure that I don't look at Mason. Mason, pick him up. Uh, will you hurry up, please? He's a little creepy. <laughs> Whenever you're done, Mason, let us know. It's uh, getting a little weird here. Okay, I'm done. All right, that was exciting. Covered up, too? Don't want to see it. Uh, I didn't show them. Oh, show them too. We're good? Yes, sir. All right. Folks, I'd like you to think of the new number, whatever it is. What the same? Is it number three, Mason? Yeah. I believe! <laughs> Mason, no, no, no. Don't leave yet. Mason, I know what you might be pondering. You might be thinking to yourself, Peter, wait a second. Who's this kid? <laughs> Clearly, he is the accomplice. He probably was given money before the show. Front row seats for the whole family. All I asked in return were some simple hand gestures. He can clearly not be trusted. Uh, Mason, you're doing a great job. Let's do this one last time. Leave the room. Leave the room with this. Once you're outside there, look around you. Make sure that no one's looking. Let's say it's three again, as an example. Put it in the box and cover it. I want you then to walk back into the room, look at me, and we're gonna try to connect just you and I, okay? <laughs> now, if I get it right, show everybody. <laughs> and if I get it wrong, Mason, do the show anybody. <laughs> <laughs> outside the room, Mason. Make sure you're outside until you pick. <laughs> I'm doing such a great job. 
little more difficult with one person. A little more difficult with one person. Whenever you're ready for me, Mason, come on back in here. I'm getting a little worried about you. Stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. Do you have a number in mind, Mason? Number six. Show him, Mason! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Great job. Well, a very effective warm-up exercise, sir. You look slightly concerned. Uh, each one of these experiments, by the way, is going to be getting statistically more difficult than the last one, just so you're aware of that. It's for fun. And also, they get a little bit more sentimental, a little more interesting. Uh, this next one has to do with a topic that was very important to everybody, and that is time. Time and fate. We think about people that we meet in our lives, and we think about the time associated with those, those, or those, uh, those meetings. Is it just chance or is there something more going on, right? Well, tonight we're going to do an experiment that deals with both topics. I'm going to be setting, in a moment, <coughs> uh, a rather old-fashioned clock to a random time. Uh, but not really a random time. I'm going to be setting it to a time I believe one of you is thinking of. Uh, then we're going to hand something out. And it's going to be literally just passed around the room. And my back's going to be turned, but when I feel the timing is right, I'm going to call out stop. And I really hope that whoever's hand this is in at that exact moment is thinking of that time that I have set the clock to. So first things first. All of you, I'd like you to put a time. routine that's been in my show for well over a year, and it uses the principle of game theory. You know, when games, and economists use these all the time, uh, you always get different outcomes. Well, this game is going to be using darts. Uh, I'm going to have one of you, in a moment, throw these darts at this map of the United States. Uh, prior to the darts being tossed, uh, I'm going to be making a very precise guess about the exact score. I believe one of you is going to be shooting tonight. Now, this happens all the time, by the way. They do bounce off, and that's good, because if they do, it kind of adds a little more randomization to the process. 
if they land on the borderline, what happens at almost every show, don't worry about it, you're going to get to choose in between individual states. The guess, though, is already in the box. It's right here. I'm going to remove some money from this little coin purse, and it's my hope that the sum of the change that I place in the box will literally equal the sum of the score. Now, i got to say this, I, and I mean it literally, but on a really good night, on a rare occasion, it's literally right on the money. <laughs> now, I mean that, look, remember I said that. It actually is important. Now, let me make the guess first, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Take it from there. Feels right, sir. Feels right. One must go with their intuition with these sorts of things. Thank you for the affirmation. <laughs> change any of those. Oh, by the way, whoever throws the darts will, of course, get to retrieve the money themselves. Uh, young man, back in the room. First name? Anthony. Correct. Anthony. Come up here, please. Give him a nice round of applause. Anthony! Anthony, I'm going to have you stand right over here. Anthony, do you know why I chose you? Because I like darts. Exactly why. Exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring the board a little closer to you, though, Anthony, even though you love darts, because uh, if they do bounce off, we don't need to chase them that way. Now, the back is foam, so it does have a bit of a rebound to it. Okay. Again, if you land in a borderline, or if you, you know, I highly doubt since you like darts, you'll miss entirely, but if you do, uh, that'd be a little embarrassing for you after that statement. <laughs> uh, but don't worry about it. Have some fun. Take off all the darts. I'll be literally in close range. So. Uh, if you step back just a smidge, not careful, that's far enough. Go ahead. Excellent start. Oh. All right. Let's take a little look see. All right. Well, you wing, yeah, you wing Florida there. Uh, Florida. These are kind of interesting ones, aren't they? Because you're technically on a borderline. If you want to be technical. On both of them. Now, I want to have a variety of different states, but let's give an option on this one. Utah or Colorado, your choice. Colorado. You're going to leave it where it is. And the other one is obviously Arizona. You have North Carolina and you've got Florida. Since you didn't really have a lot of borderlines, this is a one-time op option. Uh, keep or change. Would you like to move any or all of your throws? That's a one-time offer. What's it going to be? I'll move one. I think you should. <laughs> On the board. Yeah, actually, better yet, leave it where it is. Just change it in your mind and call it. Where is it going to go? So it was on Arizona. Yep. And where would you like it to be? Nevada. Okay, so this is actually, we'll leave it right where it is, but it will be Nevada. We'll remember that. Matter of fact, we'll add it up right now to keep things on track. And I, I'm definitely not a mathematician, so <laughs> sorry. All right, just makes it precise. Now, we'll start with Nevada, since you did change to that one. And that's 36. Plus uh, Colorado, clear. Thir Thirty. Florida for twenty-seven. Last one on the list is North Carolina for a whopping sum score of one hundred and thirteen. Now, be honest with me. Would you be pretty impressed if I actually got that right? Dollar thirteen in the box. Yeah. Very impressed, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, I asked a guy from New York that same question last year, and uh, you know, New Yorkers are a little more abrupt. You know, it's like, it's like no. He's <laughs> you know, like, no. What if you? He's like, you're supposed to get it right. Well, folks, I've got good news for you. I did get it right. All right. But I didn't just get it right. I got it right on the money. <laughs> oh, there's a reason why I keep saying that. You're about to find out. You're gonna love this. Come on over here. The box, the box, it's unlocked. Yeah, yeah. Just open it up. It's unlocked. In the front there, you'll find there's just four coins. Take them out. Just four. And I want you to hold them in your hand like this for a second. Just like this. All of them together. Now, close your hand. Now, right now, you're wondering. Your wheels are turning in your head because you're like, Peter, there's a dollar in my hand. That's a hundred. It's not even close to my score, right? But folks, you're not going to believe this. It's more exact than you might have thought. 
I've kind of misled you a little bit. The four quarters in your hand, they're all state quarters. I'd like you to take a look at any one of them and tell me which state it's from, please. Read them off. Go ahead. What do we got? First one is Florida. Florida! <laughs> Let us pause and reflect on this for just a minute. <laughs> Getting one right would be good, but at two right it becomes slightly absurd. You may continue. All right. Next one. Nevada. Nevada! <laughs> <laughs> Not even on Nevada, but that was your choice. Go, keep, going, keep going. Third one is... North Carolina. North Whoa. Carolina! <laughs> and last but certainly not least... Great state of Colorado. <laughs> Great state of Colorado! your help. Oh, the odds, the odds, the odds. The odds of guessing the four state quarters is about one in five million chance. So you see that sort of thing. Start thinking to yourself, Peter, why are you here? This is a, this is a major misuse of your talents. <laughs> I mean, if it were me, at least, right? You know, you're like, mega millions. That's where I'd be headed. Well, uh, you know, the honest, truthful answer, folks, is this. I, uh, working on it every day. <laughs> I do hope to win. You know, if I ever do win the lottery, uh, well, you might find surprising. I probably would still be here. I, I love it too much. But maybe uh, I can see this happening. Slightly expanded. The Marrakesh Magic Theater and Hotel. I, I like, I like the, the way it sounds. Well, we're going to try one last experiment of the mind tonight, and this one I know you're going to like because it deals with a topic that we all are passionate about. The topic is vacationing. We're going to create a dream vacation. Five different elements that you folks get to actually choose independently of one another, which means we can have a very interesting outcome. The first item on the list is going to be a destination. It can be anywhere in the world. Again, one of you will get to pick that destination. A hotel to stay in. The length of the trip. Uh, the checkout time. Why not? And lastly, the activity that makes the trip special. One person will choose. Now, I'm going to be up here this time, really just looking at you, trying to connect with you on a spiritual level. And I'm going to have you uh, briefly record your thoughts. Now, let's just say we're heading off to go to Paris. Well, if that's the case, go ahead and uh, just jot it down. Let's say we're going off to Paris. Write it down. Keep your piece of paper. Tear it off. Put it in your pocket. Put it in your purse. doesn't matter. What I would like you to do with the pen is just place it inside. Close it up because then you will hand it off to the next person. I'm going to be up here looking at you, trying to connect you and actually being able to uh, see the imagery through your mind. So, let us start over here. We'll work our way around the room. Katiana, nice to see you again. Uh, would you choose somewhere in the world you'd like to visit, please? Anywhere you'd like to go, dear. Jot it down. And once you've written it down, uh, keep your piece of paper for yourself. Uh, that's for you to keep. All set? All right, awesome. Actually, I need a pen for me. There it is. Um, I want you to think of this location, but before we even get there, have you ever been there? Yeah. You've never been there before, okay. Uh, have you seen pictures, perhaps? Oh, yeah. Good. Lots of them, because you would love to go yep. there. I'd like you to think of that last image you saw. Okay, so close your eyes for me. Really, close your eyes. Wow, this is a very old place. I see... Um, I see lots of old structures, but they're they're um, they're really kind of fall, they're falling down. Um, they're white pillars. Uh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it, to you? It does, indeed. You know, I, I, I think I know perhaps where we're going. I'm going to write this down. Now, I don't get all these right, of course. That would be impossible. But this one I feel relatively good about. Uh, why don't you hand it across the aisle to this young lady in the aisle seat here? Girls, welcome. Nice to have you here tonight. And um, 
would you please choose a hotel that will be staying in? Now, it should be a hotel that you'd want to stay in. That would be better. Uh, it makes for a better trip. Also, I don't know, for whatever reason, when people choose things they actually desire, it makes it easier for me to connect with them. So, write down a name of a hotel that you'd want to stay in. And it could be any hotel in the world. Keep your piece of paper. That's for you. Have you ever uh, stayed at this hotel before? No. Never. Never. Um, have you ever been in one? Maybe walking through the lobby. Oh, good. You, you walked through the lobby. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine, from your best recollection, that last experience, walking through the lobby of that hotel. Close your eyes. Really give it some imagery. Oh, this is like boutique. I'm, I'm feeling the lobby. The whole lobby is made out of like marble. And I see huge things with flowers. Not a huge staff. Actually, there's like four or five people behind the desk. Very smartly dressed. Now, does that make any sense to you at all, by the way? Yes. It does indeed. Um, this is wonderful. Wonderful choice. This is going to be an expensive trip. <laughs> Very expensive trip. Number of days. Hand it uh, down the aisle, please. All the way to this way. All the way down. Keep it going all the way down. All the way down to this lovely gal. Hello there, dear. Yes? Choose a number of days for us. This is the length of the trip. Length of the trip. Okay. And much like everyone else, keep your piece of paper. That's for you. Okay. You got it? Okay. Yep. Um, do you enjoy traveling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But at the same time, uh, I get the impression, having met you, that you also really enjoy home a lot. Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. So I'm not going to say it's too long, actually. I, mean, I think, even though it's a dream trip, I think the dream trip for you is not necessarily months at a time. Something shorter, perhaps. Think of that number for me. Just look at me and mm -hmm. think of the number. Um, perfect. You know, time to relax, time to unwind a little bit. I like it a lot, actually. It's, yeah. I enjoy being home, too. Now let's go on to the checkout time, a very precise variable. Uh, we need a very precise thinker for this. Um, matter of fact, right behind you, actually, young lady. Um, checkout time means include AM or PM, so it should be an exact time of day that you would realistically <laughs> want to check out at. Go ahead. The last show, I think the gal was like, you know, 2.36 a.m. <laughs> do, do you have a time in mind? I do. All right. Um, I'd like you to think of that time of day or night, whatever it is, and um, really think of, like, close your eyes, think of what the sky would look like at that time of the day or night, okay? So close your eyes. Oh, it's, it is evening. It is evening. Wow, this is great. I want to go to that hotel. Uh, well, okay, you know what? I think I got this one, too. Wow. This is really remarkable, folks. I mean, I normally don't connect with people quite this well. This is so good. Um, I, this is the greatest trip we've ever had. <laughs> um, I, I, hand it all the way up here. Up, 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 up. Keep it coming forward, please. Uh, coming forward, please. For, all the way. All the way to the front row. Hi. Uh, right here. Yeah, I want you to choose the activity. Now, I'm sure in the family you're like the event planner, right? Of course you are. You're like the ringmaster, so to speak. Choose something, be selfish on this one before you choose. It doesn't have to involve the kids. Okay, so it could be anything that you would want to do. An activity. Yeah, you're a little close. I'll be curious what it is, uh, really. Yeah, see, I'm helping out Food for thought. Um, is this something you've ever done? No. Never done it? Okay, good. I like that. Something you, original and unique. Um, do you have it in mind right now? Mm -hmm. Could you do me a favor? I want you to imagine you're doing it. Like, your best, what you think it would be like. Yeah, concentrate. We're gonna die. Okay, bye. I uh, I'll write it down. Let's see that a little sketchy. A little sketchy. I I don't know if that's right or not, but that, I don't know if I'd want to do that. It's a little sketchy. But we're gonna see if I get any or all these right right now. I'm gonna. Have you guys, we're going to quickly recap the elements of the dream, and then I'm just going to pick up the storyboard and turn it towards you, okay? So, starting off the location, where did you choose? Rome, Italy. Rome. Oh. Rome. And uh, where are we staying in Rome? At the Ritz. Oh, the Ritz. <laughs> the Ritz. I like the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But you wrote down the writs, is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, how many days? Here? Thirteen. Lucky, lucky thirteen. Of course. <laughs> and what time are we checking out? Nine p.m. Nine. That's C. Yeah. You can yeah. only do that at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> now we're at the Ritz. We're relaxed and we're doing something stupid. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. No. I, lots of people probably want to do this if I'm right. What? What is it? Parasailing. Parasailing. Wow, all the things. <laughs> well, some things in life <laughs> truly defy explanation, and I think this one qualifies. Because I knew we'd be going to Rome. Wow. wow. Staying at the Ritz Carlton Hotel for 13 days. I was excited that we were checking out at 9 p.m. <laughs> but what made the trip special was the time we spent parasailing <laughs> while we were It's, uh, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. Well, glad to hear you're having fun so far tonight. We're going to dim the lights back down. Uh, we're actually going to be changing up the show again dramatically, actually. We're going to get something vastly different than what we've done so far. Classical magic uh, is my favorite kind of magic to perform. I've been doing magic since I was five years old. Uh, matter of fact, the reason why I became a magician was because my parents hired a magician as our primary babysitter. Now that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea. We kept us entertained for hours. His name was Gabriel. Well, early on, Gabriel taught me. He said, Peter, no, whatever you do, practice, practice, practice. And when you think you've got it down, keep practicing. He goes, because you can never practice too much. At the peak of my practice, I was spending, not exaggerating, 10 to 11 hours a day practicing, to the point where I actually would ice my hands. I was just absolutely compelled to get it right. Well, this routine I'd like to start off this segment of the show with is one that I spent a lifetime crafting and working on before I put it in my act. I'm going to estimate I spent 20 years working on it before I actually performed it. Because the only time I'd ever seen it done was in Las Vegas in major production shows. And everyone who did it, did it for the exact same reason. Because it's something beautiful to watch. I hope you really enjoy my version of this absolute class. Doug Henning performed the rings 
in 1978 uh, in San Francisco, actually, at the Orpheum Theater. I don't know if you remember that name, Doug Henning, back in the day, but just tremendous. One of the top ten magicians in the last hundred years. And watching him do it so effortlessly made me realize that anything was possible in magic. Well, the Magic Castle for me was uh, really a wonderful experience. And I know a few of you have been there before, right? And uh, did you have a good time at the Magic Castle? Always. Always a good time at the Magic Castle. <laughs> a lot of people don't know what it is, really. It's not like Disneyland at all. Uh, it's actually a nightclub in Los Angeles, private. And if you go there, uh, typically there's about a dozen magicians nightly that are featured in all these different theaters. The building's historic, actually. It's the largest, or well, one of the largest mansions in Hollywood, formerly, and was converted into the Magic Castle. Uh, the venue, it just lends itself to magic. It's fantastic. And also, there's a lot of celebrities there. Um, Neil Patrick Harris is the president of the Magic Castle. Uh, if you go there, uh, people like him, Natalie Portman, they're just hanging out, and it's kind of a fun thing. Well, performing there, for me, was a thrill. I mean, it was a thrill. And the reason it was so thrilling is I had spent 10 years of my life writing them letters, <laughs> trying to perform at the Magic Castle. Uh, 50,000 magicians annually apply to perform at the Magic Castle, and 200 were picked. Well, this was one of the routines that I performed there. I've always liked the theme and magic of teleportation. You put the girl in the box, she appears on the other side of the room. Well, obviously this is a little confining for that sort of thing. So what I have here are four large silver dollars, a little glass, just my hands, and I'm going to do this four different ways. The first time will be rather quickly. I would suggest that you don't blink. There goes number one. Now the second coin I will do a little more slowly. Slow motion. <laughs> I just want to see the look on your face. I can see it. I can see it, Peter. Keep an eye on the coins. Here goes number two. Down into the glass. That's two and two. Now, the only way to make it a little bit more exciting and more challenging would be to try and do this in someone else's hand. Now, that would be <laughs> truly exciting. Uh, young lady, actually, would you come up here for a second? Give her a nice round of applause. <laughs> Can I have you stand directly across from me? Now, this face me. And put your left hand out like this. Come a little closer. No need to stretch. All right, let's get your sleeves up a little bit, just to be fair about it. Now hold your hand just like that, okay? I have two coins that I'm going to put in your hand. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. How many do I have here? That's right. Your choice, hard way or impossible way? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's kind of a no-brainer. The two coins are going to go on the back of your right hand, which just goes right on top of mine. Put your right hand here. The two coins go right on the back of your hand. Are you ready? This is going to be a little weird. Ready? I'm just going to rub them. And one of those two coins is literally going to melt right through. <laughs> Look, she said that was creepy. <laughs> Leave them in your hand. Now the last coin, okay, the last one here, number four. In a moment, okay. How many do you have right now? Let me keep one. Take your right hand. Now, I want you to cover those up. Now, I don't want them to fall, so clutch them. Okay, real tight, real tight. Keep an eye on the last coin, folks. From the fingertips. Invisibly. Take a look inside of your hand. Well, that 
that was one of the routines I did while I was down there, night after night, and uh, it was just a kick. Because particularly at the late show when people have been having a couple beverages, so it went, oh my god, you know, just right through the hand. Well, folks, uh, I didn't really get into a lot of this detail at the beginning. I kind of talked about the history of this place a little bit, but you have no idea how incredibly grateful I am as a performer to have the opportunity to do what I love to do night after night. And the reason I bring it up is that I, I actually made a decision uh, to quit my corporate day job. Uh, the day after September 11th, I uh, woke up and I turned to my wife and I said, Sweetheart, <laughs> I got this great idea. You know that corporate job I have, the one with all the benefits? I'm going to quit that job and do magic <laughs> full time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she stood behind me. She said, you know what? I, I just, I would feel guilty not allowing you to try because I know how much you love it. And it's been an interesting journey, and this place has been just the biggest part of it. And uh, I'm so grateful that people are coming back time and time again to see the show. The show is always evolving, and I really sincerely hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's why I do it for a living. Well, I'm going to uh, close out the show with something that is definitely special. It's a routine that was done by one guy, and it was in the 1940s. You know, I love some of these great classics because sometimes they're forgotten. And I found this, of all places, in the back of a book that was a biography about his life. His family decided to write it years after he passed away. And there's maybe 50 copies in the world. It was a very special book. It talked about his life and his evolution as a magician. It wasn't a magical book. But in the very last chapter, they went into detail about how he performed this miracle. And with the help of some other fellows that I've looked up over the years, we were able to reconstruct it. Well, I hope you really enjoy this, folks, because this is the only show in the world where you can see it done. It's a manipulation of two items, two little billiard balls. 